Hi, it's Tony again, and we're back on the bench. And this afternoon, we're going to be uh, looking into this uh, Ryobi SX5 uh, spinning reel. Uh, I acquired this in a, uh, a big box of broken down reels, and uh, I, uh, I happened to, to notice this one, and I was curious to find out what exactly is, is wrong with it. So we're going to be looking at it and um, uh, basically uh, doing our, our standard service, cleaning, lubing, um, and basically uh, we want to inspect uh, right now actually and find out what exactly is uh, going on with it uh, being that it wasn't a, a parts reel box. And so I can tell just by turning this that this is a, this is a pretty stiff uh, spin on this reel. It's, it's definitely not moving very fast. Uh, so there's that part there. It looks like the anti-reverse is okay, so that's not a problem. It looks like the bail is working okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, this, uh, this spool is not spinning whatsoever. And if I loosen up the drag, this thing will not spin at all. So that's telling me uh, that there's definitely a problem probably underneath this cap here, I'm guessing. Uh, so we're going to get into this, and we're going to find out uh, what's wrong and how uh, we're going to fix it and clean it up and get it ready for the next fishing season. Uh, but Ryobi is a, is a Japanese company. These are made in Japan. Uh, all in all, it's it's actually a pretty solid reel, I would say, uh, the way that it's constructed and built. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. So let's uh, have a look under the cap here and see what's going on. And yeah, as you can see, that's a problem. Uh, so much rust build up in there um, that's that's considerably bad and that's almost certainly why this will not spin so uh, I tell you what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, deploy some uh, some of our PB blaster on that and we're gonna let that soak in for a little while and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video uh, so that uh, we're not just idling uh, while that's uh, penetrating uh, and then we'll we'll come back once uh, once we've given it some time to uh, sink in. But we're just going to get some of that on there. Uh, PB Blaster I find is the best penetrating lubricant out there, one of the best. It doesn't smell good, but it'll definitely break stuff up uh, in situations where WD-40 does not, or Seafoam Deep Creep doesn't, or CRC Power Lube, or any of these other penetrating lubricants, PB Blaster has always uh, come through for me. So uh, we're going to try that for a little bit. We're going to let this sit for probably about 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll come back in a little bit. All right, and we're back, and uh, it's uh, it's actually been uh, a couple of days later, and I... Uh, I had this uh, spool soaking in, uh, in some PB blaster here for quite some time, and I was finally able to uh, break up this spool from uh, the axle shaft here on our, on our reel. And uh, as you can see, uh, the, the damage is, is very much so done here. Uh, this, all these, these uh, discs were were just rusted and fused basically onto this uh, axle shaft. So unfortunately, uh, that that kind of makes it uh, a little bit of a challenge. Uh, we're still going to attempt to clean this up the best that we can. Basically, we'll take some steel wool to this uh, shaft and try to clean that up. I am a little surprised that that's actually in that bad of shape given the fact that the rest of the reel really doesn't look that bad. Uh, but obviously some some salt water, some spray or something like that got in there and it just sat there and, and uh, that's that's what happens. So uh, we're going to kind of tidy up here a little bit and uh, get ready to uh, take our drags out and we're going to have to see what's involved with that. Once I did find that, I was uh, curious about uh, what I could do to replace these and uh, as far as getting the actual Ryobi uh, washers that's that's probably not very uh, very likely but uh, but I did have another spool off of another reel off of a Shakespeare Omni uh, spinning reel you can see right here it's another parts reel and uh, it's actually very much so uh, 
similar in size, actually, uh, to the Ryobi. Uh, they're very, very similar, actually. So uh, I took that spool off, and the thing about this reel, the Shakespeare, is that it had a fixed drag system in here where it's not actually meant to come out. The washers are meant to stay in there, and I, I basically pried off all the plastic uh, housing in there so that I could actually get the drag stack out. So I do have uh, some washers available. They're not the same as the Ryobi's. Uh, it's primarily the metal washers that I'm interested in. They're not quite exactly the same size, I don't think, but I think they're fairly close. So if we need to resort to that, which I believe we will, uh, we will uh, we'll do that. So, so we're going to take our... Uh, our, our spring out here and uh, if we can there we go and we're gonna get into this uh, this drag stack here and we're gonna see what we're what we're in for but I'm, I'm guessing that this is all pretty bad I, I literally had to hit this hit the axle shaft tap it with a hammer and uh, you know like a, a little punch here basically uh, to get this spool to break up even after it's soaked with the PB uh, blaster. So that's that's saying something. So I'm just going to pull these out and flip them over here. Boy, these are bad. And there's this, uh, it looks like there's this big spring down here too. And wow, that is, that is really, really bad. Uh, terrible. <laughs> Okay, well, at least uh, we know where that's at now. So what we're going to do here, uh, you can see that there's a bunch of rust uh, collected in there still. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the old WD-40 out. We're going to clean this up and uh, really uh, start moving on this here. Get the toothbrush out. We're just going to scrub and clean here the best that we can. We're going to get this uh, cleaned up. Now, this is actually a nice reel, so it would be nice to uh, revive it if possible. And I think that's primarily going to hold in the, in the drag uh, washer uh, set. And if we can replace those washers, because uh, I... There, there's no way that we're going to use uh, these old uh, metal washers that are just completely collected in rust. If they had a little speck of rust here and there, just in little tiny little spots, that might be one thing. But I can already tell just by looking at that, we're not going to want to mess with that at all. So let that WD work in there the best that it can. I'm also going to take a little screwdriver and I'm just going to kind of work my way around here at the bottom a little bit. I don't want to scar anything really, but I just want to gently kind of work my way around in there with this just to loosen up any of that stuff. And you can see the result. I mean, there's there's just a ton and a ton of rust in there. So I'm going to hose this down a little bit more. And... Uh, I'm just going to set that right there and let that kind of soak in for a little while while we work on the rest of these pieces here. So, yeah, this uh, <laughs> this is pretty uh, pretty bad actually. So, We'll try to clean up all this rust the best that we can. You know, the thing about rust is once it begins, it uh, it's it's pretty hard to tame uh, without uh, really cleaning it up real good and uh, getting rid of as much of it as you possibly can. So. Spring is actually cleaning up not too bad. So, but this has definitely turned into uh, not exactly what I would call a restore project, but this has definitely went from a service project to a um, 
let's just say a labor intensive uh, service project you know if i was working on this for somebody which i'm not you know this is this is just a reel that i acquired uh with a bunch of other parts reels you know but if i was working on this for somebody uh there would you know definitely be some labor involved in this obviously so uh you know that would uh obviously increase the uh, repair costs and whatnot just because of the amount of time that it takes to uh, to take care of these uh, these problems and take a little steel wool to this here try to scrub out whatever we can on this there's definitely some rust in here that is just going to be here and there's not going to be a lot we can do about that unfortunately But uh, but it's definitely uh, better than it was, and uh, maybe if the reel gets used every once in a while and gets some regular maintenance, uh, it'll it'll prove to be quite useful. So hose it down once more. Put that there. Put this off to the side for now. <clears throat> so our drag stack now i don't have a, um, a schematic unfortunately uh, so we're just going to lay these uh, these washers out but you can see the damage on this and that is that is obviously something that's not going to work and so uh, we're going to clean off our fiber washers here you know the fiber washers might be able to get reused but i would be shocked if if uh yeah i mean there's there's really a lot of build up on here uh if you look at this uh and there's just a lot of uh rust still that's kind of melted on there more or less and uh it's it, it's going to be difficult to to reuse these i think um but uh i'd say that some of it's kind of disintegrated almost to a degree so we'll uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay these out so you can see what all these look like and then I'm probably gonna pause again on the video and uh, I'm gonna see what I can do with all these fiber washers if they can be reused and uh, and I'm guessing some of these are not quite in the right order. I've got two fiber washers here that are back to back, which doesn't seem quite right to me. Uh, and like I said, I do not have a schematic on this, and so I will have to uh, I'll have to see what resources I can dig up to make sure that these are um, that these are in the correct order. But there's two keyed washers here. There's two metal washers, and there's three. Uh, fiber washers here so I'll uh, I'll pause here uh, for a moment and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a look at these and uh, see uh, what I can do to uh, find out the running order of these and then see what I can do to match that to this stack here that I have or whatever I have uh, so that we can actually have a drag stack in there so we'll be back in a moment all right, and so we're back and uh, laid out a, a clean towel here finally and uh, got some parts laid out here uh, so that you can see. Uh, so what you're looking at here is kind of a, a new uh, revised uh, drag uh, kit here, basically. I'll show you what some of these old washers look like here. They're just in terrible uh, shape, really, uh, pretty much to the point where they're 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 just really not usable at all uh, so we're going to put all that off to the side i was able to reuse uh, some of these uh, fresh washers from that shakespeare omni uh, spinning reel which which are quite similar this one here actually is an original one and if you flip it upside down that's pretty much the best i could get out of that one unfortunately uh, what i'm probably going to do with this is i'll probably put all this back together um, and then uh, when the fishing uh, does actually open back up at some point, I'll, I'll attempt to take this reel out, maybe do some striper fishing with it or something like that, and just try the drag out and see how smooth it's, it's running. And, 
at some point I'll, I'll probably try to replace that that drag right there but all in all this isn't too bad so we're going to put our, our stack back in the spring cleaned up uh, relatively well i think uh, and i cleaned up on the inside of the of the spool here a lot of wd-40 and some patience so you've got your spring got a metal washer got a, a fabric washer and these don't require any uh, grease or anything like that per se uh, but what I did do on these fabric washers because they they have this uh, really thick uh, film of uh, kind of a combination of rust and and uh, just kind of the disintegration of the washer itself and I just took like some 100 120 grit sandpaper and just kind of sanded these down a little bit so that they're nice and smooth so you've got that you've got a keyed washer got to have that another fiber washer that's cleaned up another keyed washer and uh, yeah just to note uh, when I took out the original stack it actually was not in correctly uh, there were there were a couple of uh, fiber washers that were that were touching each other instead of touching a, a, a metal washer. Fiber washer, metal washer, in theory that should be it. We'll put our, our uh, spring uh, clip back in here. Hopefully that'll work out okay. And uh, I, think, uh, I think that looks pretty sharp. So we're gonna put this off to the side now that we got that out of the way. And uh, we're going to push on with the rest of the reel. Like I've said in some of my other videos, you've got reel restore projects, which is something that I try to do a lot of when I can, but obviously they're time consuming. But then there's also reel repair projects. This is kind of a reel repair slash restore project almost just because of of all that stuff with all these bad washers and stuff. So now we're gonna get back to the, the main par part of the of the reel here. Uh, we need to take uh, this handle off here. I normally find that uh, a stubby screwdriver of some kind uh, like this one uh, works quite well. Get that, uh, get that screw off. But yeah, this actually is a nice reel. I would like to revive it. So um, I don't think uh, that there's any other problems really other than that drag stack. And that, that was uh, difficult to get that apart. I don't think I've ever had that much trouble getting a drag stack out, to be honest. Uh, so note that you've got a little nylon washer on there. You've got your handle out. I'm going to kind of piece these trays out here so that I... And keep track of my parts uh, so you know obviously it's dirty in here but that's okay you know we'll just take a, we'll just take a towel to that I think I don't think we need to hose all this down exactly but we definitely want to do some cleaning in here and get all that all that dirt out of there the help of some uh, cotton swabs is always a good thing to just uh, get some of these crevices here. It goes a long way. Clean that up like so. Uh, and it looks like we got three screws, three Phillips. And so we're going to get those out and uh, we're going to see what's going on inside here. But yeah, just to deal with that drag stack alone was quite a chore, so that, that's obviously a lot of time, uh, which was one of the reasons why I paused the video a couple of times, because uh, you don't need to sit and watch uh, all that penetrating lubricant dissolve over all that rust and all those things. So, all right, so uh, we got our top cap off. That looks good. And then we've got this uh, cam here with this lever arm. This is a pretty, a pretty standard design of a lot of reels. I've seen this on a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, different models. Uh, Shimano uh, makes, makes a lot that's like this. And then you've got this, uh, you got a, a bushing here that needs to come off and it's being quite stubborn actually it's not rusted but it's just on there so you can see you got that bushing and that's definitely going to need some uh, some attention I'm just going to set that in here actually so that I know 
the orientation of that. So you got your cam, take that off. And then we got our main gear here, of course. You know, it actually looks pretty clean in here. There's some dried up grease, but it's it's not bad. Uh, note that there is a, a, a washer spacer here as well, and we want to take care of that. Uh, but let's get our main gear out. And then you've got another bushing on this side. Yeah, so this this is just an indicator of, uh, of a lot of old grease here. Uh, but it really doesn't look that bad. Um, so I do not know for sure if there is an actual bearing in here. I think I'm suspecting it's probably a bushing in here. But we're going to get the rotor off anyway and take the, the, the axle shaft out just so that we can uh, say that we did all that. But first... I think we're going to clean up uh, some of these pieces here the best that we can. So uh, we're going to clean up this, uh, this cam. And note that this is not symmetrical and that this does have to go back on the correct way, this, uh, this lever arm here. You need to get that correct. And we'll clean up our main gear and this, uh, this bushing that's on here as well. Yeah, this is just, uh, this is just old grease on here. Um, but it's, it's not, uh, there's, there's, there's nothing in bad shape here really. So, so that's a good sign. Get, uh, the inside of this cleaned out here. You can see there's all this old, old dirty grease in there. Just want to get all those old contaminants out the best that you can. It doesn't hurt to spray these parts with some WD especially on these heavy-duty reels, I find. And we're just going to get some more Q-tips out here. We're going to lay some of those out, and we're going to we're just going to get all this this old grease out here and take care of that. And that way we uh, we can start with fresh grease. Yeah, all kinds of old grease just loaded up on there. And sometimes I find it's it's easier just to take off the old grease like this, kind of like in this dry format. You can hose it down with some WD-40 if you want, and that helps loosen things up. I usually will resort to that if the grease is really dried up. This isn't really dried up grease. It's it's still uh, got some some wet in there basically, but it's 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 just dated. So. Um, but at this point, now that we've got most of that loosened up, we just take a paper towel to this. We don't need to get too carried away, per se, with it. Clean off some of that. Like so. Yeah, this, uh, this is actually looking uh, exceptionally uh, good, so... You know, if there's any old grease in the teeth there, you know, you can take that out with uh, with a wire brush and just get a little bit of that that out of there. And uh, wire brush will work fine for that. Um, so there, you got that. And uh, we'll put we'll put our our bear our bushing uh, back in place here. And we're definitely going to apply a little bit of blue grease uh, to uh, that shaft right there while we're here. Just get that done out of the way. So that spins real nice and freely on there like so. Okay. And now we've got these pieces here. Might as well clean those up while we're... Well, we got these pieces apart so that they're just ready to go when, when we're ready for reassembly. We're just going to get whatever we can off of here. Clean that up like so. Looks good. Clean. What I probably will do here, though, is I'll, I'll probably just hose this down with some WD-40 and just let that kind of work its way in there shine it up a little bit yeah reels like this are a really good size reel I, i'd say that that this is this is pretty much a surf level reel but definitely a, a good um a good capacity for 
for big river fishing, you know, bank fishing on rivers and stuff like that. And um, it, it's got good uh, line capacity for that, so which is uh, usually pretty helpful in the areas where, where I fish. Okay. So that all looks good. And then we've just got these pieces here that we just want to clean off real quickly. off the inside of this bush in here. I'll just take a little WD to that. Okay. So we'll put those pieces uh, back here for right now just so that we remember where they came from. Now, let's, uh, let's push forward and we're gonna get in uh, and take our, our axle shaft out here. Just gonna move these pieces up here a little bit more so I can get this more centered. And we're gonna get this screw out here, holds our axle shaft in. And uh, there's a there's a block down here, and there's another there's this pin here, and that actually rests on the on the cam like so. Sometimes these go all the way through the cam. In this case, the cam rests on top of it and it's got that little notch uh, towards the top there. So we should be able to pull this out now. We're gonna find out here in a minute. And it's definitely not wanting to, there we go. Uh, so it's, that's been in there for a while, and this is a pretty dry uh, shaft, and so we're going to be cleaning that up indefinitely. And then we've got our, our block. We just want to get that guy out, and we're going to clean him up real good, like so. And then we're at a point where we can, uh, we can get uh, our rotor off, and I don't know the size of that. That's probably... A, see that's a 13 millimeter uh, 14 probably yeah 14 mil I'll take that nut off that came off real easily this nut is exceptionally dirty so we're gonna take care of that take your rotor off no problems there and then this is a pretty typical uh, design for a lot of these uh, spinning reels and you got your your anti-reverse uh, click here and uh, you know it's a little dirty in there but we'll we'll, we'll clean up uh, all that as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this off to the side for the moment now that we got these pieces out and we're gonna clean up uh, some of this stuff real quick we're just gonna get all this grease off the block here there's times when I like to clean pieces kind of all at once after I've got everything disassembled and then there's other situations where I kind of like to do it as I go and this is kind of one of those situations I'm not 100% familiar with this reel but its design is pretty common uh, to a lot of other reels like I mentioned so there's not too much uh, new territory that I'm, I'm getting into here so far so I'm just gonna probe all these areas here and get all this uh, this old uh, grease out basically but these are the things that count if you really want performance out of your reel and uh, I mean I can remember a time when I was younger and you know you would just uh, you would just lube up your reel or rinse it off with fresh water or whatever well that's definitely not enough if you're if you're if you're doing a lot of fishing and if you expect certain things out of you out of your gear you got to take care of it obviously you take care of it it takes care of you so i'm going to clean off this nut while we're in here yeah that's some pretty old uh, broken down dirty stuff on there so I'm just going to get all that off clean that up the best we can Get that out of the threads.
Okay. And then normally what I'll do is I like to clean up the axle shaft, obviously. And uh, as you can see, there's a, there's a lot of accumulated, like really, really old grease that's been gummed up in there. So we're gonna we're gonna take take a moment to kind of get that all out of there. Uh, you, you can just see it just kind of just baked on there. It's pretty pretty nasty stuff actually. So. But we want to get rid of all that. You know, it can, it might be out of the out of the way of the working pieces, but that doesn't mean that it can't become like dislodged later and and move into areas where it can slow down the performance. So, you know, you you really want to try to work work your best to to clean out all these all these areas. Um, we're gonna get the WD forty going on this one, and we're just gonna. Try to clean this up the best that we can. Yeah, that's a lot better. So we'll do that there. Now this end here is obviously quite rusted. So what I'll do here is I'll just take the, the steel wool and I'll definitely uh, kind of round out this area even though it's it's probably not bad at all. But we'll just clean off any, any other contaminants. You know, this is a real light uh, steel wool. So it's not uh, it's not going to scar anything too bad, but it'll make everything you know nice and smooth. Now up here, obviously uh, we've got a lot more going on, so I'm just going to cinch down on that the best that I can, basically, and uh, just do what I can to get any of that rust loosened up on there. And uh, I don't want to take a a wire brush to this because that'll that'll scar it but uh, we just want to do our best um, it's quite a bit better it's it's not perfect but it's better and it's good enough that uh, it'll it'll work for us and we can put things back into place so as you can see, we're making a huge mess here, uh, and that's that's you know this is one of those projects where you know it, it can turn into that. Okay, so uh, we'll clean up in here now, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get all this excess grease out of here. As you can see, it's uh, it's built up quite heavily in here, and uh, you know. Just tons and tons and tons of it. So we want to do everything we can on that. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll actually be looking forward to trying this uh, this this one out uh, once it's all fixed up and see uh, see how it's how it's running and. Uh, not that I need a, another reel, but uh, I like to experiment from time to time with, with new stuff. Or stuff that's been fixed up anyway. If I have confidence that it's going to work for me, then all the more to, to try it out at least. So you can see just all the accumulated grease in there, and it's it's pretty rough. Yeah, all that gets caught up behind the pinion gear and all over the place, and then it uh, it can just do all kinds of stuff to you. I'll get a little bit more in there. What I'll probably do at this point is I'll probably just uh, hose this with a little bit of WD-40 uh, just to loosen up any of these other contaminants that are in there. Anyone that's watched some of my videos on doing saltwater uh, reels uh, probably have already figured out that I don't uh, like, like using any WD-40 or anything like that where uh, it can get on the on the spool or the line or near it because uh, I uh, 
I have suspected that it affects the uh, the bite, <laughs> uh, especially if you're like trout fishing and stuff like that. But when it comes to saltwater reels, I, I have no problems uh, deploying WD-40. So, okay. So I think this is probably about as good as we're going to get it, more or less. So I'm just going to get the paper towel in here real quick. Work my way around in here. Clean off the top here some. Doesn't look too bad. It's a little dirty, but nothing unusual for a reel of this uh, of this age and caliper. Now note that there is some. Uh, there is some little bits and pieces here in the pinion gear that I would like to get out. And uh, it appears that this is kind of more hardened grease. I'm seeing a couple of different kinds of grease in here. I'm guessing this is probably newer grease in here. But you just want to loosen that up the best you can. You can take a wire brush to this if you want. I'm going to just attempt to kind of work it out like this. But... Uh, We'll see what happens here. Assuming that there is a bushing uh, in here, though, which I believe there is, and opposed to a bearing, uh, you know, bushings typically don't need a huge amount of work, but uh, I, I do like to hit them up with a bead of oil, usually, uh, just to just to get in there with something. Okay. All right, so. Let's have a look at that now. Let's see what uh, what we're in for here. So we've got a couple of different pieces involved here. I do recommend taking pictures as you go if, if you do this kind of stuff, with any reel for that matter. But you've got your, your anti-reverse uh, click here. And then it would appear we've got three uh, Phillips screws holding this, uh, this, this lock retainer in here. And uh, it looks like we're going to have to get those out in order to pull this out. So we'll, we've come this far. We might as well continue. Get one more out. Almost. And the whole opinion came out, and that's that's fine because it, it should be cleaned up anyway, more or less. So um, that is uh, that's pretty much your assembly right there, and uh, that bushing is uh, is right there. Basically, not much uh, to it, and then you've got this uh, ring. And, uh, and that's all you have. So we're just going to clean up these pieces and we're going to put them back and uh, we're going we're gonna to call it a day. Get a little paper towel in here and more Q-tip action. And you can see just all the... You'd be surprised how much stuff will get hidden in areas that you're not looking at too. And, you know, there's there's always a lot of that going on with this stuff, so... But the details matter, you know, if you if you want your your reel to work good and for many years to come. I have quite a few reels that I'm very attached to and uh I just prefer to use them over other reels, even newer ones, because I just like the way that they operate. So uh we're just gonna kind of do a quick inspection here. You know, there's a little bit of tarnish in there. I'll just see if I can work that out. Ever so easily, a Q-tip here, but I think that's probably about the best that we're going to be able to accomplish there. So, but all in all, it's not bad. Okay, now our pinion gear. We're definitely going to make sure this guy is cleaned up real good here, and we're just going to get all that old old grease out of there. 
clean this guy up real good. Um, you see that? Hose him down with some WD. That's all good there. Okay. So now comes the part where uh, you want to put all your pieces back and uh, note that you had uh, this ring that went there. And then uh, you've got your uh, your bushing. And I'm just going to slide that back on. We're going to put this uh, back into place. Note that there is a key right here, and it would appear that you have to have that key lined up. Uh, with the appropriate hole, so hence it can only go one way. And what I am going to do here, as I always like to do, I'm going to uh, get the oil out. I'm going to do a little bead of oil in these holes here, and I'm also going to just do a little bead of oil here on top of the bushing and let that work its way in there just by spinning this around. That's really all you need to do there. Um, there's there's not much more that's necessary in this case. Just got a little gunk hiding in here that I want to get out. So now we can put our, our screws in place. Get them started anyway. those back in there okay we'll snug that up and we're just going to clean uh, our anti-reverse uh, click off here a little bit. Let's take the WD to that as well. And clean that off real good. Some old hardened grease on there. Looks pretty good. So we should be able to uh, put that back into place like so. And now we're also going to deploy some oil here on this on this dog spring here. We just basically want to hit any any area that we can uh, where where you know that's gonna that's gonna be hitting more or less. Get inside there, and I'm seeing some more dirt here that I'm not liking in these areas here, so we're just gonna work that out the best that we can. There we are. Also here. That's typical, you know, you'll, you'll find stuff as you go, and you'll say, oh, I don't like that, I wanna clean that up. Okay. Uh, looking at our rotor here, we're just going to take a peek underneath here. Obviously, uh, the, there's not much going on here, but use the paper towel to your advantage. Get it cleaned up the best that you can. Clean that up. It all looks uh, pretty passable, I'd say. Okay. So, uh, we are ready to start uh, going back and uh, piecing this thing together. So, uh, we're going to get the blue grease happening. And uh, we're going we're gonna to apply that to our, our pinion gear. We want to get enough of that on there. Not, not overdo it, but you want enough. There. 
And then we can start putting uh, our rotor back into place. And let's put that back on like so. Now note, when you do this, you want to check to see if there's any play in there uh, once you tighten your nut. And so we're going to have a look at that and uh, we're going to see uh, what that looks like. Put our nut back on, 14 mil nut. Just going to snug that up ever so gently, don't need to torque it. Okay. And yeah, I mean, there, there's really not any real play in this that I'm, I'm feeling, so that's good. Um, there's, a, there's a little bit, but it's, it's not bad. If it was bad, it would indicate that your, um, your bushing is probably bad and it would more than likely need to be uh, replaced. Uh, axle shaft, go back into place along with our block. And we're gonna we're gonna do the blue grease on the on the axle shaft here. Let's go up and down here, like so. Put that back in. Note that there is a, a fiber washer on top here that belongs there, and uh, we're just gonna double check our block. It all looks good. This kind of has to go in in a certain fashion here. I'm just going to have to pull it off camera here for a second so I can get a better grip on it. There we go. Go like that. And line up that hole down there for your screw. Put that back into place. I just dropped it. There and I'll do another little bead of oil on there just for good measure since we're down here. Get that screw started. Yeah, if this reel had more cosmetic damage, like with the paint and stuff like that, I wouldn't even waste my time doing this. But the fact that everything looked pretty good, minus that drag system, uh, made it worth it uh, for me so far anyway. So I won't really know until I, I try it. But Let's get some excess dirt that's hiding up there off. Okay. So now we're ready to uh, put the main gear back in place and uh, just going to do a little dab more of a uh, little bit of blue grease here on the outside of this guy on the bearing. And then we're, we're definitely going to be putting it on our, on our teeth here. I definitely like to use the blue grease for the more heavy duty saltwater stuff in general. Um, sometimes I'll resort to using uh, other stuff for the smaller reels just because they don't uh, usually get uh, quite as much um, uh, abuse from the elements and whatnot. So slide that back into place like so. That mates like that. And then we are just going to do a little bit of blue grease here around this guy and on our shaft here in that area. Just a little bit here because there are some moving pieces when the cam goes back into place. We we'll want to make sure that's there. You got your cam and uh, your pin. And uh, pin 
should go like that. Your cam, you have to get this uh, lined up like that. That snaps in down here, like so. And that, uh, that all looks pretty good. So, we can start uh, putting these pieces back in. You got your, your, your ring washer there. Got your bushing. Got a little bit more old grease that's hiding in there. And get that out. Sometimes these bushings can be difficult. Sometimes I'll, I will put just a little bead of oil on the shaft just to kind of help get those going sometimes. And this one is being considerably stubborn. There we go. Okay, and that goes on like so. Put our plate back in place. And uh, before that, we'll do our beads of oil. Go like so. Spin those back on there. But as you can see, it's going back together a lot quicker actually than it did uh, coming apart. Uh, the majority of this video has been taking it apart and doing the cleaning. Um, and all that stuff, which is typically the case uh, when you get into these kinds of projects. But uh, okay, so that all looks good there, and uh, our anti-reverse is working good there. So we'll uh, we'll just uh, we'll put our handle back on, and I'm probably gonna just. Uh, Splash this down with a little bit of WD-40. Just to, you know, it's a little pitted in there. It's 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 not bad though, uh, considering the age of the reel. Um, I don't know what generation this is exactly. I know that there were a couple of different generations of this model. I'm not sure which one this is, but. Uh, Put the blue grease on there just for good measure. Slide that in. We'll get our, uh, our, our handle screw back into place and our nylon washers. And we'll just do a little bead. I, I can see there's a little bit of rust on there, but that oil should work its way in there. And hopefully after a couple of uses of this reel and uh, some cleanings, uh, hopefully some of the rust that may be left over in any threads or whatever will hopefully uh, free up a little bit more and uh, uh, help uh, prolong the, um, the life of the reel. And there's no cap uh, that goes around here on this. Uh, there may have been one there at one time. I'm not sure. But uh, I'm just going to get this excess grease off of here, dirt or whatever it is. There we go. Okay. So we're off to a good start there. So now uh, we can put our, uh, our spool back into place and uh, see what happens here. Goes on real well. Not putting up a fight or anything, so that's good. We're having a real problem with that taking it off, so that's good. So we'll, uh, we'll put our top pat back on. And we're going to try this out and see, uh, see how this works for us. Tighten down the drag more. Apply more tension. It's feeling really smooth, actually. Uh, so that's a good thing. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely working good. I'd say. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's uh, 
that's definitely a, a smooth running drag now. It's not sticking or anything, so that's a positive thing. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll try that out. One thing we will do uh, before we, we lock it up, uh, we're just going to hit a little bead of oil in here uh, for the bale. And, uh, you know, this bale hasn't had any problem per se, uh, but we're just going to work that in there uh, just to let it hit the, the elements, so to speak. It's kind of a tight squeeze in there, but oil is good at working its way in. So I'll just do that. I'll just wipe off any excess here. Okay. And there you have it. That is the Ryobi SX5 spinning reel. Uh, serviced and uh, restored, so to speak, uh, with the drag, my smooth drag, ready to go. So this is Tony with Back on the Bench. Thanks for watching. Uh, it took a while, but we got there. Uh, if you uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time.